Hey everybody, good morning. It's the middle of December. It's still, we got some snow last night, as you can see. It's freezing out, it's probably 19 degrees right now. We're still pouring concrete outside. Got a lot of work left to do. Everything's outside though, so it's gonna come to a, a halt here pretty soon. This guy had that covered, this covered with blankets, so there's no frost in this. He actually had a ground heater on it, so it kept the, the sub base nice and warm overnight. Um, concrete just shows up, it's about 8.30. It's about eight in the morning, actually. We got two 10 yarders coming. Uh, concrete's good and hot, so it should be good. And he's gonna cover this over right after. It's just, just a uh, mobile home pad, so all we gotta do is pour it, bow float it, and then we're out of here. That's it for us. So it should be a pretty easy one, as long as everything goes well with a creek truck. The creek truck doesn't freeze up, so we're gonna get him backed up, get going. Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. So what do you think? You think it's too cold to be pouring concrete out here today? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, if you're gonna pour concrete when the temperatures are freezing, you know, you gotta, you gotta, number one, site prep is the key. These guys, you can see the excavator way in the background. These guys were just here, you know, the last two or three days, digging this out, site out, putting in the gravel, they added a little bit of crushed rock this morning because they were a little bit low on one side. But the key for them was they kept the, the subgrade protected with those blankets, you know, at all times that they weren't working on it. So they would, they would put the gravel in, level it out, compact it, and if they were done for the day, they'd cover it with blankets before it froze. And that's really, you know, that's the number one key to, to doing concrete when it's freezing like this. Um, and then, oh, just lost my mag. The, uh, the second key is having the right mix design. You know, you got to, uh, you got to order the right concrete. So you want, you want to, you typically, you want a concrete with a high cement content because the, the higher the cement content, the more heat the concrete's going to generate as it cures. And then you got to be able to have hot water in the concrete for temperatures are this low. I mean, otherwise, you know, if the concrete shows up at 55 degrees or so with just cold water, it's gonna it's gonna cool off way too fast and, and start to freeze. You know, when you start when you're starting out with water temperatures at 130 or 140 degrees at the plant, and then they mix that really hot water with the aggregate and the sand and all that, we end up with a temperature right here on the job site at at about 70 degrees. So when you're pouring, especially when you're pouring six inches thick, it gives you some time to really work with it uh, and let it cure up before it cools down too fast. So today, today, we, you know, we just got to get this unloaded, get it spread out, get it screeded, get it bow floated, and then that's going to be the finish for this because, like I said, they're putting a mobile home right on this. So a single wide, I don't know what you guys call it, mobile home or single wide trailer is gonna set right on top of this and 99% of it's gonna be covered with the, you know, with the home itself. So it's basically just a base for the, for the home. And we don't, do a, we don't do a ton of these anymore. I used to do a lot of them in the past. Um, double wide homes, single wide like this. Uh, it just doesn't, there doesn't seem to be as many going in now as there was, as there was way back 20, 25 years ago. But when we do do them, this is basically how we do them. I mean, some guys, some contractors will do them with, will throw some wire mesh in there. 
Uh, we're going to end up putting a double row of rebar around the outside edge. We'll wet set that because there's nothing really to tie it to here. But for the most part, you know, we'll just use the fiber mesh. We'll use the, the high strength concrete with the fiber mesh in it. As long as the sub base is compacted really well and it's not going to settle, you know, we never really have a problem with these cracking or breaking up. It's just, it really depends on the sub base. If that's done right, the concrete's just not going to crack all up on its own. So um, having a good concrete mix is a, is a big important part of that too. But for us, you know, the three of us, me, Darren, and Luke, you know, we'll get, this is two trucks. This one's a 10 and a half yard, or the second one's going to be a 10 yard. We also got a little pad going in right over there where the excavator is now. <laughs> Matter of fact, he's digging the hole for it right now. That's going to be for the propane tank. Uh, it's going to be an underground propane tank, so you'll see how we just how they put in a pad for one of those. But for us, the three of us, it's just like, let's get this down, get it screeded, get it bow floated as quick as we can because I don't know about you guys, but when it's 19 degrees out, and even with gloves on like I have right now, my fingers, my fingers start to freeze up on me. My boots, my feet stay pretty warm because we're walking in the concrete. That's kind of warm. Um, and my body's not too, too bad, I guess, as long as the wind isn't blowing. It's usually just my fingers. What bothers you the most in the cold? I mean, or do you even, do you not even live in the cold so you don't have to worry about it? Let me know down in the comments. For me, like I said, it's my fingers. So we're getting... We're trying to get this thing dumped out as quick as we can, but I mean, you can really only go so fast. So we're gonna we're gonna mag. Well, you'll see here in a minute. We're gonna mag float the edges right after we wet set the the bars, and then we'll get this truck out of the way so he can start washing out. Because basically, if you leave if you leave the concrete sitting for even a minute, it freezes right to the chute. Same with that little that little cold chute we call a cold chute, a six foot cold chute we use to start with. If we don't wash that right up, like it's sitting, I can see it sitting out there now. That concrete's freezing right to it right now. Um, I mean, the hot water from the truck we get to use the hot water to wash stuff with, so it does it does still clean the the frozen concrete off the tools. But it's much better if you can just rinse it off right after you use it. Then it it comes off a lot faster. You can see a little bit of steam coming off the concrete. Um, I'd like to see, honestly, I'd like to see a little bit more. That would mean the concrete is even even water, uh, warmer or hotter. But just seeing just seeing some steam is a good sign. That means that means we got warm concrete going down on the ground. When we get done, you know, today when we get done with this, we're gonna put those blankets right back on it, even though the concrete's still gonna be pretty soft. We want to try to hold in as much of that warmth as possible so this stuff starts to cure up and then the guy we're doing it for here his name's jim he actually he actually get it all formed up for us and ready to go this is his place you know he's gonna he's gonna leave those blankets on for probably about a week before he gets the mobile home moved on try to let the concrete get up to you know if it's for four thousand psi concrete you probably want to let it get up to about 2,500 or 3,000 psi, at least before before you move the home on it. And that'll happen. That'll happen in a week if he keeps those blankets on. So it's not like it's not a crazy fast process to get this dumped out. And if you're thinking, well, geez, that stuff you started with first, where you first pulled that out of the truck, it's been sitting there for quite a while. Wouldn't that be setting up on you if the concrete was so warm? Well, I mean, it could. It could be. But, you know, if, you, if you're experienced and you do this a lot in these, in these temperatures and you use the same concrete company all the time with pretty much the same mix, you know you got a really good idea of how much time you have before you got to get it screeded, you know, before it starts setting up on you so it, it makes it more difficult to work with. So we know... We know we have enough time to get this truck dumped out, even if it takes us 10 to 15 minutes to get it dumped out. Then we know we have enough time to get back and still get it screeded and bow floated before we start struggling with it. All right, so Darren and Luke, they're wet setting the rebar around the edges. 
just you know for something like this with no wire or rebar mat in it to tie anything to this is the easiest way we found to do this and still keep it right about in the middle of the slab so you know Luke's pushing it down two or three inches get it right in the middle we'll keep it an inch or two away from the edges and you know we'll keep them bars four to six inches apart so basically they just help help uh, strengthen up the edge a little bit when they go to back the trailer on it and if the slab does want to crack you know it'll help hold it together on the edges we've always done them this way I've, I've done hundreds of them like this with no problems here in Maine so this is this is really the basic way that we do it six inches thick is a pretty standard thickness too for a mobile home pad up here in Maine there's there's really like in this town we're in no real building codes in this town some towns do have some pretty strict building codes on how to do it and what to do and even some of the mobile home companies will have their own uh, standards or details on the slab but this particular one didn't so we're just doing them based on how we've done a lot of them in the past and again the homeowner this is for the homeowner himself he's an actual contractor he's a plumber but he, he knows a lot about concrete too so we're doing it to, to what his spec is I mean it's it's his it's his place right here he owns it so Darren's just tuning the concrete in it looks like we may have got it a little bit low in there sometimes that'll happen when you dump out a big long piece of concrete like this you run the risk of being a little high or a little bit low personally it's better to be a little bit high and want to pull it back and to be low and have to continually push it push it up to the screed one one nice thing you get to see right here where it's this close is that screed demon the the power screed here from mbw how smooth that leaves the surface and it's going to make it so easy to bull float and what i'm doing you can see what i'm doing there running running the the power screed is i'm basically looking from one edge to the other i just want to make sure my edges are both touching so the, the both edges of the screed are touching there and they're leaving that line they're leaving that line and if I if it if I see some of that line disappear that means one of the edges lifted up above uh, where I mag my pad and that means I'm high there and if I see it dipping down too low then I know I'm holding it in one place too long and the screed is just kind of making a dip that's right about perfect right there as you can see I'm leaving a little bit of a line on both sides and you'll see when I go to bow float just how nice and flat this is going to be. No, no humps or dips or anything under the bow float. So that's kind of what you're looking for right there. And it leaves the, the power screed leaves a, a pretty nice uh, vibrated surface. So it'll settle the aggregate just enough below the surface. So it leaves a nice paste on it as you can see. And when you go to bow float that, it's basically like bow floating some smooth butter almost. <laughs> You can see Darren, he's working hard to keep the concrete up behind me so I don't have to stop. Those guys, and now Luke's going to step back and push some up there. That's probably the worst thing for the rakers is having to push mud back up. It's, it's definitely easier to pull it backwards as the guy's screeding. Look at how hard they're working compared to how hard I was working pulling that back. Now I'm running the bow float over it and I got a little piece of, I don't know, dirt or something frozen to the bottom of the bow float. So I had to scrape that off. It was leaving a line. Once I got that off, you can see as I run that bow float over it, just how nice and smooth that is. So I can basically just go up and back once and that'll be the finished surface for this. Now how can I tell it's flat? Well, when you bow float over something like this, if it if the bow float runs if it runs smooth from edge to edge of the bow float, if there's no little dip under it or lines or holes or if the edge of the bow float doesn't lift up and rise up and not leave a mark, then you know you're flat. So if you watch the bow float as I'm bow floating here, from from one side of the it's a four foot bow float so from one side to the other both ends are touching nice and flat there's smooths in really nice under the bow float 
that tells you right there it's really flat under that thing I don't have to come back and shovel some in and fill in areas and if you have to do that with a bow float you know your screeding needs a little bit more fine tuning <laughs> or you got to slow down your rakers need to be a little bit better or something but um, right now I'm going around like a sewer pipe in the middle so we get right up to the the pipe and then we angle we're going to angle the screed just a little bit to get one side go for a couple feet pick it up then I'll angle it and go the other way and that's kind of how we get around a pipe with a vibra screed like that look at the dog the dogs over there behind the other concrete truck going what the heck is going on it's too darn cold out here to be doing anything <laughs> Yeah, you can see how I'm going around that pipe. And that's about as close as you can get to a pipe. So then I'm just going to go a couple feet. Then I'll have Luke just take his his rake and just kind of clean that up around that pipe a little bit for me. So when I come to bow float, it'll bow float out nice and smooth. Yeah, that's all it takes right there. This first truck actually went quite a ways. He did about two thirds of this, but that's kind of because we got we got two or three extra yards for another little pad we're doing here at the end. So make sure you hang out and wait for that to see that. The guy bought a 500, 500 uh, pound propane tank, underground propane tank. So the excavator is back there. He's digging out the hole down below the frost line, which is a little bit below four feet. And he's leveling that off a little bit. And then the homeowner made like this little form. We're going to pour a couple yards right in that so he can, and flatten that out so he can set that propane tank down in there. And then they'll just bury the propane tank and it'll be right out of sight. I'm going back and just magging out my lines. Whew, all right. One truck down, 10 yards, move on to the second. My fingers are froze, I can't feel them <laughs> in my gloves. Uh, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna get by. It's the struggles of born in Maine in the winter, I guess. I've yet to find a really good way to keep your hands warm while you're working outside in the cold like this and you're touching you know, ice cold steel like what Darren's touching on the chute or even the rakes or the bull float. Um, and, you know, you really don't want gloves that are too thick because you got to be able to move your fingers in there and have some type of control with your fingers. So, I don't know. If you guys know something that I don't, just let me know. But nothing, nothing I've found. Even those, I'm wearing pretty thick gloves today too for, for what I normally wear. It's just, I don't know, it just doesn't work very good. So... If there's some secret type of glove out there or some hand warmer, you guys let me know. This second load, the second load here felt like it was even warmer than the first load, which is kind of weird because when they batch the concrete out, the first the first 10 yards or so of, of uh, material, aggregate anyway, and sand are actually inside the inside the garage. And then after they empty those bins into the first truck, then they got to reload them with, with uh, material that's been sitting outside. So typically the first load out of the plant is the warmest. Um, but this one definitely had, it was warmer. You could just tell on your boots and you can see the steam coming off it. It was, it was steaming quite a bit more than the first truck was. I'm get these edges mag and I'm gonna have Luke take over with the power screed because my fingers were too cold I, <laughs> I couldn't hold on to the handles of it sometimes I gotta take my fingers right out of the fingers in the glove and just kind of make a fist inside the glove for a, a minute and then that warms helps warm my fingers back up then I can put them back in the finger slots of the glove <laughs> I've tried heated gloves the trouble with heated gloves you know the battery powered heated gloves is they're just too bulky and if you get your if you get if your hand is moist at all and you try to pull your hand out of those heated gloves it 
it kind of pulls the liner right out with it and that just makes a mess inside those those gloves I'm wearing right now are about the thickest I can wear and you can see that the fingers on them or even the fingers are way too big makes hard makes it hard to hold the mag sometimes when I when I rake when somebody else is running the vibra screed you know my most important part of the raking is is right along the edge right there where I am right now is keeping that nice and flat as flat as I can possibly get it without getting low so the hardest part about screeding is is uh, keeping your two edges down nice and flat so if the raker can keep the concrete down nice and flat right there it just makes fiber screeding it so much easier But we didn't end up getting too much concrete in there, which was a bonus, you know. We didn't have to shovel any out. If anything, we might have had to scoop a shovel full back in there just to fill up that one little piece. And now you can watch as I run this bull float over it just how flat it is under the bull float. Again, if there were any issues, if there were any humps or dips, they would show up right now. That's exactly what you want it to look like under a bull float when you're pulling that bull float. All right, that's done. Everything's just freezing on contact, it's so cold. That concrete won't freeze for a little bit, but he's got to get it covered within probably 30 minutes or so, half 30 minutes to an hour before it starts to freeze. It was pretty warm on our boots, so I know the concrete temps were up around 70. Now what we're doing is we got a little, a little pad we got to pull for his propane tank. They're gonna bury the propane tank in the ground. So we put a pad in just to set it on. It doesn't have to be anything special, but I'm gonna get this poured in the ground. So you can let it set up. They'll just set the propane tank right on. Propane tank's right over there, that green thing. So we'll just get this dumped in here. That's Jim right there, the owner, the guy with the orange hat. And I didn't check, I didn't check the pad for level, but they did have a laser set up right up here, up top. You can't see it right this minute, but so I'm assuming, you know, when Jim, when Jim set the forms in there, they checked it for level and got it, you know, as level as they needed it to be, if not perfectly level. There will be some bolts that Luke's going to put in here. Though, you know, they can shim under it. That is a laser. You can see it way back there in the background. Um, I mean, they could shim it to get it level if they needed to, so I'm sure they got it really, really close. And again, we're below the frost line here. That's why we can just put this pad right in on the dirt. So they're below the frost line here in Maine is usually around 48 inches, 4 feet. Um, and it looks like the pad itself, I mean, if Luke stood up, he Luke's about not quite 6 feet, but almost 6 feet tall. So it's about right even with his head so they're down about six feet right here and again nothing special on the finish they bolt that that propane tank down get the get the get the gas line run and then they just they just bury it that's it you won't be able to see it other than just a tiny little piece sticking out of the top here Okay, that's all they need for that. Just something to something to set that tank on right there. Whew, we're gonna get out of here. We're freezing. Like I said, it's still in the teens this morning. The ground's all frozen. 
Again, guys, thanks for watching. They're covering that up right now, as you can see. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.